My name is Dr. Anthony Lamar, I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about the use of an Impella RP for right ventricular dysfunction. But before we get started though, we're going to review the anatomy of the heart, we're going to review what actually right ventricular dysfunction is, and also describe the Impella RP. Okay, so this is a model of the heart here. I like to think of the heart in terms of sides. This is the right side, right atrium, right ventricle, and this is the left side, left atrium, left ventricle. Now, on the right side, blood will classically go from the right atrium to the right ventricle. The right ventricle will squeeze and push blood to this structure. This is referred to as the pulmonary artery, and it carries blood to the lungs. In contrast, the left side, left atrium, left ventricle, when the blood gets to the left ventricle, the muscle will squeeze and push blood to this structure. This is referred to as the aorta, and it carries blood to the brain through these structures and it goes behind the heart and supplies the other organs, the liver, the kidney, and even the extremities. When someone has right ventricular or right heart failure, what we're referring to is this portion of the heart not functioning well, not squeezing well, and pushing blood to the pulmonary artery. Now, there are many reasons why someone can develop right heart failure. For example, if there's an intrinsic problem with the right ventricle, for example, if there's right coronary artery disease or blockages in the arteries that provide blood to the right ventricle, that will prevent the right ventricle from squeezing well, contracting well, and pushing blood to the pulmonary artery. Another op reason would be, as I mentioned before, blood will go from the right atrium to the right ventricle, but between the two is a valve. It's referred to as the tricuspid valve, when the valve opens, blood will go from the right atrium to the right ventricle, but when the valve closes, blood will stay in each area. If there's actually a problem with the valve, where the valve is leaking, or if it's stenotic or hard to open, that can compromise the function of the right ventricle or right heart, and that's going to compromise the blood flow to the pulmonary artery. Another reason why people develop right heart failure is if there is something wrong with the lungs, if there's an intrinsic problem with the lungs, for example, pulmonary hypertension. That causes a pressure buildup in the right side of the heart, the right ventricle, the right atrium, which will make it not function well and, again, compromise blood flow to the pulmonary artery. Now, another very common reason why people develop right heart failure is, in fact, if you have left-sided failure. So if the left side of the heart is not contracting well, that actually causes a buildup in pressure in the lungs, which will then build up pressure in the right ventricle. Now, regardless of what causes the right heart failure, the treatment initially of patients who have right heart failure is actually medical management. It's medicine, with the most common being a diuretic. A diuretic is a medication that causes you to remove or release volume from your body, urinate to volume off your, out of your body. And that's the most common reason or common uh, treatment for patients with right heart failure. By getting volume out of the body, you will hopefully decrease the size of the right atrium, right ventricle, and therefore hopefully it will allow the right ventricle, the right heart to function better by removing the volume. That's one of many medications. It's also based on dilators uh, that actually can also assist the right heart as well. But when you've exhausted all medical management with your diuretics, with your vasodilators, and you still need support for the right ventricle, that's when the Impella RP comes in place. Now, traditionally, if a surgeon was called for someone with right heart failure and you need mechanical support, classically what we would do is take the patient to the operating room, open their chest, and we would put a cannula into the right side of the system, right, heart, right part of the heart, specifically the right atrium. The cannula and right atrium would take blood out of the body, the blood would get to go to a machine, it would get filtered, the blood, and then another cannula would go into the right, into the pulmonary artery. With the blood going into the pulmonary artery through the cannula, you effectively were bypassing the right ventricle. So once again, traditionally, two cannulas, one goes in the right atrium, takes blood out of the body, it goes to a machine, another, another cannula takes blood, go, another cannula, excuse me, goes into the pulmonary artery, providing blood. Now that's the traditional route. That would, of course, require us to open the chest and put all these cannulas in. That is, is still effective, but high, has multiple potential risks the most common being bleeding issues. Now, there are new ways of treating right heart failure mechanically without actually opening up the chest. And that is actually where the Impella RP comes in place. This actually is an Impella RP right here. There's critical aspects of the Impella RP, but two I want to specifically talk about. The input area of the RP, this is actually placed in the inferior vena cava, which provides blood to the right atrium. The, this input area is pulling blood out of the out of the lower portion of the body, 
and will then push blood out to the output area. And this output area, the impeller RP, is in the pulmonary artery. So once again, the input area gets blood out of the inferior vena cava, out of the right side of the system, and then it get, the blood gets pushed into the pulmonary artery through the output area. Once again, effectively removing or bypassing the right ventricle and therefore allowing the right ventricle to recover and rest. So once again, with our model of the heart here, the inferior vena cava actually is right here. And so the inferior vena cava, the impeller RP would go in there and then ultimately go rest, the output area will go into the pulmonary artery. Again, blood going, getting pulled out of the inferior vena cava and getting pushed into the pulmonary artery, allowing the right ventricle, the right heart to rest. Now let's describe how this is actually done. So impeller RPs are classically placed in either the operating room or the cardiac catheterization labs. And that we use fluoroscopy or, and also the use of a transesophageal echocardiogram to provide support to assist it to place these devices. Classically what happens is we use an ultrasound to get access to the, to the femoral vein in the groin. Once we have access, we'll take a wire and we'll place that wire from the femoral vein into the inferior vena cava through the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. Once our wire is in the correct position, we then take our impeller RP here and we'll place the cath, the impeller RP over the wire and advance the impeller RP into the correct position. So once again, ultimately, we want the impeller, we want the input area in the IVC and the output area in the pulmonary artery. Again, so once again, we're pulling blood out of the IVC and pushing it into the pulmonary artery, effectively bypassing the right ventricle. Now, the many benefits of the impeller RP, which are published, include we decrease the right ventricular workflow. Again, decrease the right ventricular workload. So the force and output, the, the work the right, right, right heart has to, to accomplish is reduced. We also decrease central venous pressure, otherwise known as CVP. As I mentioned before, one of the treatments of right heart failure is by decreasing the volume in the body. Well, CVP gives us a measure of how fluid overload the patient is. So by placing this impeller RP, you're decreasing that, that number, decreasing the overall volume in the body. And number three, you're increasing the cardiac index, increasing the workforce of the heart. Now, another benefit of the impeller uh, RP is that, once again, it's minimally invasive. You no longer, we no longer have to open someone's chest to provide the support. Now, the impeller RP is actually one of a few devices that can be placed minimally invasively, but I think it holds an important benefit, once again, of being a minimally invasive approach, and, I'll, and as literature shows, having uh, um, a significant benefit. Now, there is risk of placing an impeller uh, RP. Number one, there's a risk of infection, there's risk of bleeding. Another pos possible negative is that by placing this device in the femoral vein, you unfortunately are limiting the patient's ability to mobilize, um, walk around the uh, IC intensive care unit because the device is in the groin. But I still believe it plays a role for those patients who uh, need support um, and don't have the luxury of being able to walk around either way. Okay. Uh, this is a brief description, dis excuse me, a brief description of an impeller RP uh, for right ventricular dysfunction. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you very much.